So I'd like to call to order the work session of Wednesday, March 2020, 24. Laura Sapper Board of Supervisors, if anyone could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Which brings us to our first public discussion on the agenda, well, our first and only. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to be recognized? Very good. Seeing none, we'll move right along. Approval of the work session minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to approve the March 5th and February 21st, 2024 meeting minutes as presented. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Nay. Carried. Public Works Director, Mr. Jones. Good morning. Uh, an update on some projects. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, an update on streetlight upgrades. I know all the materials have been received, but I just don't know whether they've been installed or not. I haven't uh, gotten communication from our contractor or our consultant on that. So I'll follow up with them and see where we are. May I ask for the ones that have been installed and have now been operational for a while? Correct. Let's go. I mean, <laughs> outages, things on that line. I mean, we seeing an improvement from where we were before that you know, obviously they should last forever. The LED. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a couple of issues, and I don't know whether it's with the um, this lighting management system or whether it's the fixtures or any of the components themselves, but there's a half a dozen or so locations that seem to be persistent problems with. We get the notifications that there's an issue, there's an error, there's an outage or something. So we don't know if it's uh, like a communication issue with the nodes or whether there's actually physically a, a problem with them. So we're working to resolve those issues as well as getting the, the last remaining fixtures installed. But overall, yeah, it seems to be um, the systems are very reliable. And you know the lighting is just much better. Um, haven't really gotten any one or two little complaints concerns about the brightness of them, but uh, nothing significant. So so far, yeah. Other than the communication and the you know the the lag in completing the project and um, been in my mind a worthwhile endeavor. Total number of lights remind me. Do you remember? How many kind of lights I love? Uh, around two hundred. Yeah, it's a fair number. Yeah. So to have a couple that are too bright, it's glitchy. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I don't know if it's if it's on the the the, the software side, of, you know, the the lighting management system side, or whether it's a, a physical it's issue with a component that's installed. We're still trying to figure all those details out. But sounds good. But we're continuing to plug along in that. Appreciate all your follow-ups on this. I know it's been a lengthy process. It's, it's not, been longer not, than I had to promise. Sure. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Persistent. Um, Public Works and Community Center facilities. Uh, we've gotten a preliminary site plan from CKS on the community center. Uh, I think we're meeting this right after this meeting to discuss that and also uh, talk about all the, I guess, the missing pieces that we need for the for the grant application. Uh, the Main Street sidewalk project, the meeting with Small Realty was canceled. They engaged an attorney to represent them, I guess, through the process and uh, we're trying to work between Stephanie, Rick Mast, and their attorney and Andy to uh, coordinate a meeting to uh, try to push this project forward. So I'm still working on the sign relocations for all three properties there. Uh, the garage rental at 804 Harleysville Pike. Um, still working with the owner's attorney on ironing out some details on the draft lease agreement. So hopefully I'll have something this week. Um, and I know they had a garage sale this past weekend. Apparently there was a lot of a lot of tools that were that went very cheap. So um, we're working to clean it out. So that's good. 
Oh, is that address a Harleysville flag or is it Schlosser? Okay. It's a Harleysville flag address. Okay, so I think I might have saw the Schlosser in the past. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it is a Harleysville. Oh, Andrew's well, yeah, is it's off. Okay, I no, I've read it that way. I was just double checking. <laughs> well, there's, there's there's the driveway off of Harleysville Pike and one off of Schlosser. It'll lose through there. Yeah, yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah, it's that corner property. Um, Grants uh, was spent a significant amount of time and effort on the community center grant application. Again, thanks to Stephanie for coordinating that effort. Um, it's it's a lot of pieces to pull together in, in a short amount of time. So uh, we're we're working on that. Um, Wright Park Stream Bank Restoration Phase Two. The uh, Perky Island Watershed Conservancy has been invited to submit an application for the to the uh, Schuylkill River Restoration Fund for uh, the grant. This would be a 2025 project. So we're hopeful that we're, we'll be successful in that, or they will be successful, and then we will partner with them in, in getting the project completed, like we did the, the first phase of that, that project that worked, worked really well. So we're working on with CKS on getting uh, preliminary plans and finalized and uh, and also uh, working on permits as well. I think that's one of the requirements for them. They want at least initial permit applications in, in hand or you know completed and submitted. So as part of the uh, funds process, so we really want something that's more shovel ready. So we're working towards that. <laughs> Uh, contracts were finalizing the specs for the pavement markings and the base repair contracts. Uh, hopefully those contracts will be awarded at the April 3rd meeting. And also working on the road, res road resurfacing list for 2024. And that will be a, uh, through the joint contract that we have with Franconia Township for the, the Cape Seal and the, uh, the Nova Chip. Department activities completed the, the sign replacements on all the Cape Seal roads. Significant amount of roads we did last year. So there were, you know, a, really a ton of signs that had to be replaced. So that was a, a lengthy process. Um, transitioning from winter ops to construction activities now. Um, working on the Roth Park improvements. Two trees have been removed. Uh, the new parking areas have been created in stone and waiting for, for paving. Uh, we're currently regrading the playground area um, to make it more usable and also to give us some additional area that we can uh, add you know, additional play equipment within the playground. Um, also adding some under drain for the uh, the play uh, surfacing as well because it, it just fills up and then it just it's wood it rots if it's not drained. So we're trying to improve that as well. Um, the fence will be installed next week. So we're, we're moving on forward on that project. Uh, Park Avenue Fields, aerating, top dressing and seating this week. Trying to dance between the rain. And then uh, gearing up for the trout stocking on March 28th. And the uh, YMCA daycare and the Southern and Charter School will be involved in that as well again this year. It's such fun. It is fun. What's your road signage? Yeah. At the intersection of Quarry and Main Street, when we have a traffic signal that has all the lit up street signs, do we still need to have the pole mounted standard street signs at the intersection? No. Okay. I'm just curious if there's, if, if there's still a requirement for both. Unless, unless it was shown on the permitted traffic signal. To have them. Those signs are supposed to, by the permit, be there. I think that would play it. Once the illuminated signs of mass don't go up, those other ones. Okay. Yeah, that correct. Right. Yeah, that's correct. One of the challenges <laughs> with, is, is with these signal permit plans, we, we have to watch when they get up, or, you know submitted for approval because they everything gets thrown in the, onto the signal plan, and whether it's ours or not, whether it's related to the signal or not, it's there. Well, there's. On the pork chop island there in Wawa, there's two signs that are knocked down now. Not knocked down now. They're always knocked down. They're yeah. down more than they're up. 
Uh, I just noticed them yesterday or the day before. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm crossing my fingers that they're not on the, the signal burner. Because a lot of times it, it extends that far out. But, and whether it has anything to do with the signal or not, the surveyors that go out there to pick up this information and submit the permit plans, a lot of times include things that, in my mind, shouldn't be included, and then they become ours to to maintain because they're on the signal for hand plan. So, Stephanie, uh, you're duly noting that comment, correct? Oh, we've had this conversation. <laughs> we've had this conversation before. That crosswalks, pavement markings, and yeah, all that. So, thank you. That's all that I have. I've been answering questions. Any questions for Doug? All right, moving right along. East Chief Paul. The only item I had, uh, personnel covered under executive session. Very good. Uh, building and zoning, Mr. Buki. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So far this month, we have VA building permits. They're the grand open the spring season. A couple of new homes being constructed. Um, the upcoming Planning Commission meeting, we're going to be looking at 196 Main Street this week again. And as discussed previously with this board, um, you'll be looking at the 196 Main Street Municipal Use Hearing in April, at your April regular meeting as well. If they get a recommendation from the Planning Commission. Correct. And also, you should be, we're anticipating a presentation for the wall letter of feasibility study, also at your April. Hopefully it's a small it's not a no can I it's not a presentation, Mike. It's really just the resolution accepting um that the study is completed. There's no presentation scheduled. I think correct. <laughs> so you so you shouldn't see that. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for that clarification. If you missed the presentation and you want to see it, I'm happy to go to YouTube. Right. Or the website. Or the website. Correct. So aside from all of that and the ongoing ordinance amendment that we're working that's everything I have for you. <laughs> Excellent. Any questions for Michael? All right. Very good. Uh, Mr. Jukowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first item on the manager's report is actually um, application follow-up for the DCED CFA Community project request. This is a uh, request that I came through Senator Casey's office, and this is related to the Route 113 shared use path, path project. Stephanie is going to uh, discuss this with you. Good morning. Um, so, at the last meeting, we talked about the shared use path uh, progressing the project development um, along the alignment of the alternate 113 route. Um, I was tasked with setting up a meeting with DCED, which I did with Michael Shore. He's the area representative. We've met with him now on a few different uh, projects and gotten good feedback. Um, so in summary, I had that meeting last week, and he thinks that the progressing the develop, project development for the path is a good project for Greenways Trails. Um, a few things to note, um, given the overall length, which is nearly a mile of path for both sections. He recommended focusing on the southern section, which is on the left-hand side of the exhibit that's on the screen. Um, it's roughly 2,400 feet or so um, for, for this segment. And as we discussed, it would be um, developed with the alignment of the road and you know being considered. Um, he liked this section because it tied into Schlosser Road, which has a small parking area and a small trail segment as well as tying into Truman Court, the existing trail that was built as part of the Truman Court uh, land development on the right-hand side of that section. Um, and one thing I wanted to note is in, in looking at this, I think one recommendation would be to consider if you can go to Morris Road, um, for some reason, my line work's not showing up on the, my screen. I don't know if you can see it. Um, there's a section along, there it is, um, Morris Road from um, the realigned road up to Lederach Village Apartments. It's about 500 feet. I think that would be a, a section that should be considered for this southern 
portion of the trail. And I think that should be probably added into the scope um, and then ultimately tie into the trail that is going to be uh, built as part of the Letter Act Village Apartments. Um, so that makes a, a nice southern section for the path. Um, the northern section, if you scroll to the right, uh, would be about the same length um, and um, ending at, at Landis Road. Uh, so that we are noting here would be a second phase um, just because of the size of the Greenways Trails grant um, limit, which is uh, 250000 So um, he, he said to focus on the lower section at this point and prepare the application. You know, he recommended preparation of that application. He, does, he did add that the legislators generally support shovel-ready projects because they're more visible, but because of the size of this one and the nature of this one being a path, um, he felt this would um, have legs with the, with the reviewing committees um, moving it forward. So as part of that meeting, he also shared with, the, with us the fiscal year appropriations um, application through Senator Casey's office. Um, which is due a week from Friday, the 29th. Um, and so he said we should reach out and discuss this project as well um, as part of as part of that application. In the past, we've submitted for the whole kit and caboodle with the 113 alternate route, um, but it's really just too big of a price tag for that program. Um, so he suggested submitting um, for construction for the shared use path, which would essentially mean, you know, project development under other resources such as the Greenways Trails and whatnot. Um, so that package was attached, I think, with your um, board packet, um, and it does require a 15-minute um, meeting with the senator's staffers, which we have scheduled for Monday, the 25th at 9:30. We were able to get that scheduled yesterday. Um, to go over the scope of the project. Uh, but again, they they said that we should continue, I guess, to pursue preparation of this application to get it in by the 29th. Um, we'll use a lot of what we have for last year's with the whole project, but we will have to obviously edit the, the text to take out the roadway portion and focus more on the trail. Um, Let's see, so that being said, um, the one other piece that I think would make the Northern section probably uh, more favorable in the future would be if you can scroll to the right, Mike, um, there's an orange dotted section along Landis Road. That's the segment that is missing. It goes off the page to where it would tie into the development that has the trail. Uh, but then again, that's another 1,800 feet of trail to make that full loop. So again, I think that that's probably too much to add into, um, say, phase two for the shared use path. But it's it's something that is um, on the, the mapping application from the Trail and Sidewalk Committee as a future project. So I put this together to show how all the pieces tie together. Um, but again, you're often trying to build the scope towards the budget of what is allowed to be submitted and, and recommended for award. So at this point, I'm recommending going ahead with the Greenways Trails application for engineering or project development of the Southern section. We can look at it once we develop the full scope, if we could possibly at least include a preliminary layout of the Northern section. Um, that's due the end of May. So you will have a, a resolution for that at the May meeting, most likely. Um, and then also, the appropriations package, which is due next Friday. So that one is more pressing <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, to get Steph that in. Yes. Stephanie, when you're looking at this in the future too, I, I like your say, I like your phase three Landis Road segment. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a phase four or an addition to, which would be to go west on Landis Road to tie into the development that's only a few properties down. And we have the township open space and then it, would tie a wrap around over towards your neighborhood. So that could, that would really link that, that a section of the township that doesn't have much linkage into our trail network mm -hmm. in itself. If, if I could piggyback that comment, uh, what, my only comment that I really wanted to ask about, discuss as well is with that Landis Road, um, one of the needs that we discussed for the Paterno um, traffic link was pedestrian crossing. Is there, could we make safe pedestrian crossing, excuse me, at Landis Road? I know 
And yeah, as I said, I don't live too far from there. I think I've gone through the Paterno intersection three times already today. And uh, I mean, I, I don't see the need for a light, you know, I know we looked at the report, but I think if we could get a crosswalk there, whether we would get that grant or not, we have another option that we could take advantage of right here. You mean to cross lane this road as a signal? Yeah. And I mean, I know my family, we, we cross all over 113, but you know, I know it's, it's, it can have its times. And I think that we discussed as a board, you know, that's important to get across there. That could be a good opportunity to have one on that side of the street. I would also potentially add that in this section to, I guess, the north of Landis Road, uh, of what you're looking at on the screen, I foresee if and when, you know, the 113 alternate route ever comes to fruition, there is a, another section in between Landis and Paterno that I think warrants or could benefit from either a center left turn lane, you could have a left turn lane here, you have the left turn lane at Paterno. And there's a lot of driveways in between and we've heard people commenting obviously with the 488 site and the left turns into cheswick potentially a center left turn through there would benefit a lot of single family residences at which time i think could also include some type of pedestrian connections between landis and paterno at that point so there is there's there's more beyond the limits of this plan <laughs> But I was using this plan as a discussion point for when I meet with the senator's office, right, to to kind of bring them up to speed, because they're not up to speed, obviously, with this whole section, uh, but to describe what we would be focusing on uh, for this year's, the 2025 appropriations package. Uh, quick question, uh, a clarification, that you're looking at doing this uh, in conjunction with the construction of the road or before? This is solely for the trail. So um, the road is something that is not going to be submitted at this point or be discussed as part of these applications. This would be for the trail, uh, but it would take into account the road location in the future. So anything put in as part of these programs, the trail would remain and be in its ultimate location. Well, um, so if they do build the road, excuse me. Uh, if they do build the road, wouldn't they put the trail in next to it anyway? I mean, it, it, would this be a waste of money or? Uh... Well, well, the trail would be. So what came out of a lot of our public coordination was the need to make these trail connections in this area of the township. Right. So as one way of doing that without, a, because the road is expensive, there's a, there's a lot to it. Um, one avenue was thought about to put the trail in first and make that connection so people have that opportunity to move about through this area. The trail would then be there at some point in the future if if and when the road were to ever come in and the road would be built with the trail there already. So it's building the trail first and keeping it in the future um, and then adding the road if and when that ever comes to fruition. Does that answer your yeah, question, Dave? The idea would be that we're not gonna we're not gonna rip the trail out when we do build a road. It's gonna run. Right. But I'm just thinking about uh the 202 extension they put in. Um, you know, that they they put that through and they build a, a trail next to it. Rather than us yeah. having to put a lot of money out of our pocket, you know, have it on on the plan here that we're gonna do it. But you know, it seems like they would put that in as they build the road, you know. But well, the only thing it might make the future application for the road more attractive also because the cost of the trail would no longer be required so that the overall value of the improvement might be something that we could get finally funding for. Gotcha. Yeah, it's really, uh, so one of, you know, one of uh, the comments we definitely heard is, you know, the fact that this area is thought to be open space, which it's not. It's it's township right of way for transportation purposes. And adding the trail will also, I think what we heard was people want this connection. They can't really get this connection along existing 113 because of the proximity of the buildings and the lack, you know, there's constraints there. So this would allow connections to be made for users besides the vehicular traffic. It would also open up the fact that it is a right of way that the township owns that is for transportation purposes. 
and it will start to put people in that area that can be seen traveling along that section of trail, if that makes any sense. Um, Stephanie, so, one of the go your, ahead. Your, your phase three trail going down Landis Road, if you're just trying to connect over to the Toll Brothers development, the distance might be quicker just to look at extending phase three down 113 and utilize the sidewalk network in Cheswick rather than having to run something all the way down Landis Road. Mm -hmm. It's a significantly shorter distance to get to the same interconnectivity. That is right. correct. Yes, there there are definitely options um, around around here. Um, you know that the trail along Toll Brothers just ends at Landis Road. There, um, it, it does seem like it would be logical to bring them up to 113 there, but I agree there's other ways around. And when we look at the mapping that we have from the county, if you recall, it, um, everything that's the same color is linked in some fashion. So if you look at that mapping, there's a lot of red and red means you can get anywhere on anything that's red. <laughs> um, it may be circuitous, it may take a while to do it, but you can do it. Um, so there's, there is a lot of red that's all throughout the township because those are all linked. But there's also other colors that are not, you know, that are isolated. And this side of the township tends to have more of that, um, you know, isolated segments. So having having something to look forward to try to make those connections is is really what we were looking at here. Okay. All right. So the question before us is pursuing a grant that would do the the engineering portion of this right mm -hmm. separate and apart from the construction and that would the engineering be both for the north and the south side or just i haven't i haven't i have to write up that scope for the grant i think we're going to be focusing on the southern section primarily we'll see where that takes us and how much we can do for that because remember if the appropriations bill is or grant would be received it is federal money I think we all understand what federal money does to the the engineering side of things because there's other hoops to go through. Um, so, in that in that regard, I would want to focus on the southern. And if there was something that could be done, like you know the updated survey and and things like preliminary layout for the northern, possibly. But I don't think going through the PennDOT oversight process would allow all of that to be done. All right. So. Just if I may, uh, another question. Uh, this what what Dave said. Um, do we have examples? And I know it's a question that I asked before too. Is you know presuming they put down the road, we put a sidewalk there too. If they do that in the future, and just to cover everything, do we have examples where it's they're more likely to accept grants because they may have had a trail? Or are you familiar with any situation where you've seen a trail or you've seen a sidewalk and you've seen maybe them move a little more aggressive in this situation? And I, I guess I, 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 yeah, I don't really know if I have that specific example. Um. I just want to reiterate, this would only have a, a trail. This won't have a sidewalk also. This is just no, the trail. I understand the, the trail. And I think I was saying what Dave said, similar to like 202, where they put the trail there or a trail like thing. Um, and I'm not familiar with that project so much. You know, I would assume that they would, if not put a trail, put a sidewalk. And that's, you know, when that road is done. And I'm just, you know, covering those angles too. There's no sidewalk that will be proposed as a part of the 113 realignment. The pedestrian multimodal portion of this is a trail system. So it's going to be what ten feet wide, twelve feet it has wide. To be, it, it has to be ten feet wide with the federal federal dollars. Is I know the township spec is eight, but the requirements now are ten across the board for shared use paths. So that's what it's going to be. There is no other option. Yeah, I think the question comes down. If I can translate, maybe the. Idea would be like if a new road goes in, there's usually pedestrian access that goes with it, whether it's a trail, sidewalk, whatever it is. New new roads that get built have that. Depends. If we depends, but if we jump the gun, so to speak, and we just do the pedestrian component of this, are we spending money that would have been otherwise spent in the road construction? My yes, my that's my counter. Point. Yes, that's my, point. Yeah. that's my and point. My counter, my counter to that would be. Right now, this project's not moving off center. There's not, no one can fund this. We've been trying to get a funder for this for 20 plus years, and it's not going anywhere. But we do have a need based on the village, on the walkable letter rock study 
for the pedestrian access through here. Yes, we're going to spend some of our local dollars, but we're going after the exact same dollars that we would go after if it was going to be a road construction project to fund the construction. So whether it's paid for under this grant program or that grant program, it would still be paid for by other people's money at this point for the path or at some point in the future as a road and a path. Okay. That makes it cheaper than right. I, I was just saying, I, I don't want to lay out a whole bunch of township money for this. If, you know, it's covered by grants, who cares? Yeah. But what's going to happen is we're going to have to pay for the design of this. And what we're trying to do is get a grant to pay for the design and we do our local match. Any way we look at it, we're going to have a local match for any part of this that's going to come through, except for maybe the eventual construction of the roadway. But we've already, you know, we'll have paid for the right away. And so I, I think it follows the same path we've always done, which is leverage our limited local dollars, which mm -hmm. with much larger grant dollars. Right. Is that yeah. accurate, Stephanie? Yes, and it's just it's just a slightly different phased approach yeah. than what would have been considered in previous years, looking for the whole thing. And and the the biggest point is the whole thing is very expensive. So pu putting the puzzle pieces together to get to the end result is what's needed. And this is what we heard is this is really kind of the first favorable step is to really focus on the path at this point. And okay. I will add the Greenways Trails does have a 15% uh, required local match to right. the grant request. Yeah, and I, and I will also add that I believe there is a CFA meeting scheduled for March 26th, uh, next Tuesday, um, where we're hearing that, you know, last year's applications for MTF, I don't know about LSA, uh, if those would be on there, but um, the the idea is the MTF will be on there. I don't know if anybody has heard anything about this particular application, but I'm I'm assuming not at this point. <laughs> um, and we'll see what they have to say um, at that meeting next week. I would say that if if the township was fortunate enough to get something out of their MTF application, I suspect it will not be what the full request was. Um, so those they always give you a chance to rescope your project uh, based on the any award amount. So if that were to be successful and happen, we could certainly go back and rescope it if need be to address the portion of the engineering of the trail, maybe for the whole length. But I'm just I'm speculating at this point, <laughs> um, be, depending on those results. Thank you, and I think uh, thank you for explaining that question again. <laughs> No other way. Um, and I think the first question I had was just, you know, if we have other similarities where with a project like this would attract bigger and better grants, you know, for the future. That's that's what I was asked. But if you aren't familiar, the idea is that this will. Correct. But I, I think the idea, Stephanie, would be if our su success has always been from when we put we get the right away, we invest ahead of time on the engineering. And this is just following up on that is now there's another step, which is another piece of that puzzle has, is going to end up being built if it gets built. So it just makes each of these easier for someone to give money to in the future. There's pieces right. of it have been done. I think that's right. a specific example. But it's the same philosophy. Oh, yeah. oh we have specific. Our no, no, of putting a trail ahead of the road to get the road right. built. But no, the specific examples of the other part are there in abundance. Yeah. Yes. I And the only other thing I'd like to add is if you can do any kind of pedestrian crossing on, on spot 113 is or kind of emphasis or, you know, maybe just some kind of clear walk. That, I think that for the north phase, you're talking about Landis. Yeah, right? where we hit it is yeah. 113 is Landis. And I mean, that guess whether whatever happens in the future with other projects we have, there's some pedestrian crossing right there. That's the only spot of 115. Yeah. The design of that will come in the future. All right. So what we have before us is, if I understand it correctly, design, we're going to submit an application for the Greenways Trails for at least the, the max sub amount is 250000 for that grant. So it's going to be in that range. I would for imagine. the southern section. Yep. Correct. And then to the extent we're able to include portions in the north section, we will. Then we're going to use the construction dollars from Casey's appropriations grant to build whatever you can get designed. Do I understand that correctly? Okay. That is correct, yes. Is it uh, do, do we need a motion to make this all happen or are we good? I have a work authorization that I'm preparing for the Greenway I, or that I can get over to Joe for the Greenways Trails applications, very similar to our previous applications. 
uh, preparation. And then the Mr. Senator. Chairman, motion to authorize the township manager to approve the work authorization from McMahon and Associates for the Greenway Trails application and to further direct the staff to work towards the uh, with Bob Casey's office for the additional grant funding, uh, all of which needs to be done in the next two to three months. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Good job, Steph. Thanks, Thank Stephanie. you very much. Yes, thanks, Steph. I, I, I will follow up after the Senator Casey's uh, meeting next Monday if anything changes, but that's the, I think. Um, Perfect. We'll have everything. Look for some uh, requests for supports. You're going to include some kind of typical section or cross section or dull this uh, thing up a little bit? We certainly can. Thank thanks, you. Steph. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the management report is a new record welcome letter presented by but thank you uh joe um as as i've discussed with some of you all individually a little bit about discussions with the communication um the communication committee has been looking over the last several months at an idea of a welcome pack. this came about from conversations that uh, we've had with residential facilities and residents we have a lot of new residents in this in our community and you know one aspect that people don't think is people are getting right off the turnpike going home getting right back on the turnpike going to visit family and not really seeing what we have uh, some of the comments where they didn't even know we had you know in our community so one idea that we came to was having a resident welcome letter we know that we have a lot of communication that goes out to the residents um, including not just ours you know we have the indian valley connects all sorts of information that gets resources our idea was to get people connected to the community faster than any other needs. Uh, the way we could do this is one of our committee members, John, actually took, they actually went ahead and uh, paid for, uh, to try, you know, try to get uh, contacts of people. And what it was is something called lead space. It costs $60. It gives us 100 to one, we, we figured there's 100 to 150 new residents per six months. What this does is it gives us all, all the new residents that have moved in. We go through the list, we can check which ones are actually Harleysville, you know, make sure everything is Lower Salford residents. And the idea would be to mail each one of them the new resident welcome letter. You all have in front of you a rough draft. Uh, I shared it with the chairman who actually made a nice copy. What it is, is for those who are watching, it's dear new resident and new neighbor. And we feel that having something that says dear new resident, you know, it's a great way to draw people to our website to see all we have to offer. Um, the only difference on this, as you can see, we have a QR code. We decided that looks more aesthetically pleasing to put the QR code on the bottom. So if you have that in front of you, the QR code would just be on the bottom there so people could scan it. Uh, attached with this would also be a township quick reference guide and the township map. Um, and that will allow people to see what we have. Um, again, we uh, looked through this. We figured that the cost is low. Um, we know that there's a need for this. And we just think it's a great way to reach new residents and pull them closer to our community. Uh, we want to bring it up to this board of supervisors and, you know, if we have your blessing, kind of pursue this and uh, we can have, get back to you with the final and for our first means to go. I would open up any kind of conversation. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of work into this and crap. Mm -hmm. What we felt was important in keeping it as short as possible so we don't have a bulky envelope with a lot of price, you know, with postage and whatnot too. Uh, Kevin, I, I think what you have here is a good idea. Um, I think you need to, uh, personally, this is just my personal feelings, in your letter, maybe give a little history of the township first. Because actually, when I read it, I thought it was funny. Like, you have community there and you have a mine shaft after. I'm like, what did he just call me? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just um, maybe just a, a, a little history of the the, the um township and then add you know tell them what gamine chef means kind of thing and then lead into your the rest of it that was my thoughts on your letter i think it's a good idea though, to send something like that out i agree and i agree with dave's comment just yeah gamine chef seems great but it's sort of out of you know from that said maybe a sentence or two i also just suggested i think in the order of the things in the bullet points i would put the township website first and then yes. push the other one that's the one that has the most resources for anybody to go to and that's really where we want people to go first <laughs> so but otherwise i i, I like it I, favors I helped author it so i like it <laughs> i was going to complain about the way we want to explain that yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
All right. We will fix that up and uh, report back to everybody. Again, good, good we work. Have, we have our good. communication committee meeting tonight. So I Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Nothing further, Mr. Chair. Very good. Any other comments or questions? We do have a need for. Otherwise, we're going to move to an executive session involving person. One other item of possibility. And one other item of possibility. Anything else? No one wants to go in place. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Well, we ever say aye. 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 Michael. Have a good he day. Needs to participate. Bye.